but now it's time to do the fine tuning to get me there. Because like everybody, sometimes you're lucky you get a couple extra weeks to get ready to go. I'm lucky that I get a couple extra weeks to fine tune everything that I need to fine tune before I go. Very good, Mr. Philip. I have another question. This is just a general question. So I have known you for a long time and we always have fun, especially when I used to tickle you when you were very young in the monkey bars. But you have always had many friends. You have very, very good friends like Jack and Jeff who are really extremely smart and helping you here. How, Mr. Philip, how come that you have always had very good friends you never seem to run out of them. What have you done that has allowed you to have such great friends like Jeff and Jack? That's a very interesting question. And I feel like you, and I feel like this panel has really morphed from transitioning to college to basically you finding out all the secrets of Mr. P that you've always wanted to learn about. So this secret is actually very interesting because I've done a million and one different things in my life. I have a million and one different interests. I've performed, I've done choir, I've played baseball, I've done basketball, I mentor. So there's, and I'm very social. You can see me on a daily basis, I'm on my phone about texting people 12 hours, eight hours a day because I love talking to people. I feel like the fact that I'm social and I can't sit still. During lunch, I would garf down my food and then I'd walk around talking to people. And I just feel like I'm a very likable guy because who doesn't love the kind, understandable underdog? So, Mr. Fell, you're saying that people like you because they tickle you the way I used to do? No, it's because of the underdog factor and the fact that I personally think I'm a very approachable guy and I understand a lot more than people are thinking and I think I'm very wise. Some might say I give good random life advice. But, Mr. Feller, you were never an underdog. I always told you, you were a dinosaur, not an underdog, right? So I don't agree with you. I don't think you're an underdog. I think you really, you really knew what, what, what was going on. I always said to you, you're a dinosaur, and I think you are, even though you're, you left high school. So it's very good that you keep in touch with friends. Um, again, I go back to Jeff and Jack. They are older than you are and you have this ability to make friends of all ages. And uh, do you have any advice for people to, you know, how to relate to others and how to have good friendships? Because they are really important in life. Sometimes that can make more of a difference than other aspects. Uh, so what have you done, Mr. Feller, to be so liked by everybody? What's Is it that you, you, you um, take Jeff and Jack to an all-you-can-eat after this, or what do you do? I'm going to throw this as an example. When I was a freshman, I actually started befriending all the older kids. Because as a freshman, you need, if you get the older kids liking you, that means you're safe. Because if you play social situations like a giant game of chess, and that you can learn to like other people's interests. But if you want to, <laughs> if you want to deal with this socially in a correct way, then we're, you're fine because chess and life socially are very similar. You make one, it's like you move your bishop one space, you move yourself one space to a new situation. It's that. Life is chess as chess is to life. Also just being yourself helps a lot and just 
making sure having all of these interests for individuals is just very important and just helps people get to know you and hopefully make you a better person. And so Philip, in the future, do you see yourself coming back to Simsbury or do you see yourself moving to Okinawa? That's very interesting. It depends on where my job takes me. I might have a gig in Okinawa. Honestly, who knows? I can even have a gig in Chattanooga. I can even have a gig in Philadelphia. I could even have a gig in Tennessee. Wherever the job takes me is where I'm going to go. I feel that I am a very flexible individual. So I'm very good at understanding what needs to happen when it needs to happen. And I think the secret of life of where I'm supposed to end up will be revealed soon. And I don't even know what the secret of life to where I should end up is because we'll honestly see it depends on how everything turns out. That's really what's going to be the determining factor to the secret of life. Very good. And I have a last question, Mr. Philip. So what do you think about your experience in just living in Simsbury? Did you like it? You didn't? What was the good? What was the, if there is anything you didn't like? What can you tell us about that? That's actually a very good question. And I was hoping that you would ask that. It's actually shown me that some parts of the country are locked in a bubble. This town is locked in a bubble of we don't care if what happens outside the bubble. No one that lives outside the bubble doesn't exist. If you live outside the confines of the bubble, you are not real. As well as living in the suburban town where a lot of people are just rude and disrespectful, I've learned how to pick out the good from the bad. I've survived program departments in high school where are dictatorships. I've dealt with jerks. I just say the biggest thing I've learned from Simsbury is get onto your horse, ride straight through the issues, and just deal with it with a grain of salt. As I said before, everything in life happens for a reason. And you need to understand that anything could happen and you gotta let it happen because everything in your life the people that come to your life are there for a reason it's okie dokie -doke. now we are going to start talking about my elementary experiences all right now that we are at grade five it is time to introduce the first of two key players in my life story that helped me become the person that i am today with all of the leadership skills and everything that becomes such a Philip Shankman hallmark. It is time for you to meet two out of three of the ladies responsible for that. The third one, she was too expensive for me to get to agree to do this. Our first one was my special ed teacher from grades, part of grade six all the way to the end of Miss if grade be wonderful, the talented, let me make sure I pronounce your name correctly. Miss Tracy <laughs> Downs Goolsby. Hi, Mrs. G. Good evening, Philip. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. I'm not sure why you needed practice pronouncing my name. Is that part of the humor? Yes, that is part of the humor, Mrs. G. You should have remembered that from the first take. Yeah, I do remember that. The way that we're going to do this is we are going to first, I'm going to talk a little bit about each experience and then the wonderful Miss Tracy down school and speak. We'll go on talk about a little bit more. In fifth grade was the first formal tech evaluation that I had. Grade five, 
tech evaluation was to see, was I appropriate to get assistive tech? Could that be helpful? And because of that assistive tech evaluation, which helped tear down a lot of barriers, which we are going to talk about later, a certain device was introduced. Let me grab it, let me grab it. My handy dandy individual processing Apple device, short for iPad. Anything you want to add about my best friend, the iPad? I'm, I'm ecstatic in the moment that you just referred to it as your best friend, because <laughs> it should be. Can you explain a little bit why you're ecstatic that I finally called it that? Because when it was introduced to you as an assistive tool, you were extremely resistant. Um, you wanted nothing to do with it. And all the adults knew that once you uh, tried it and tried the different apps and you know tools and programs, that it would actually help you a lot um, and decrease some frustration and um, increase your productivity and output quality of the output. Um, so the fact that you just called it your best friend just made my day. <laughs> What's funny is it was actually, I'll get to this story in a couple minutes, where you actually said to me once, it was grade seven, you said to me, in order to be successful in high school, you need to turn your iPad into your best friend. I remember you saying that to me. Yes, and it, and it happened. I'm so excited. <laughs> and what's funny, Mrs. G, we're actually going to be talking to the person that is responsible for that in a few, after we get through middle school. Did you know that? Who's responsible for making you love it? Yeah. Well, a whole part of that was maturity. Um, and then, of course, the guidance of your next special ed teacher. Who did a we have to admit, who did a pretty good job at selling this thing called the iPad. Oh, fabulous. Now on to grade six, the first signs of rushing homework occurred because I was getting more homework and I wanted to get that over with and done with. Because you know me, folks, I like to hang out with people and talk. As well as in grade six, I started transitioning to middle school, having a PPT with actually my middle school special ed teacher, who just so happened to be the beginning of the sixth grade teacher, Mrs. G, as well as touring the school and doing other activities like using locks at indoor recess in elementary school, as well as working on reducing my anxiety for the transition by getting my schedule ahead of time and exploring the building so I knew where do I go and how do I get around a strange location. Mrs. And, this is wonderful, Goolsby. Do you have anything you would like to add? I think that was one of the best things we planned was to have you have your schedule early, get a tour, find your classes, get acclimated with the building, um, be able to ask questions, about a hundred, but that's okay. <laughs> um, um, you have to admit, I asked more questions in high, the high school transition than the middle school. Yes, I was. I was fortunate enough to to support you through your transition from sixth to middle and middle to high. So we knew what worked for you, um, and asking questions is always a good thing. Um, I'm, I'm joking when I say, you know, you asked 100, but you needed to ask 100 um, to reassure yourself that everything was going to be positive and it was going to be a good transition. And if you watch my 10 things presentation, you'll actually see me go into more detail about this transition, surprisingly enough. Okie dokie, let's get to the next slide. I'm going to just talk about a couple of the elementary advice we have. Educate the process, parents on the IEP process. They are new to this in high school. Make, in elementary, I mean. Make sure they understand what is happening. 
make sure that the PPT meeting room does not have a lot of service providers in the room. This is imperative. This is to make sure that the parents do not get overwhelmed because if the parents are overwhelmed, then they won't be able to focus. The less people in the room, the better. I am a big believer on the rest of the things, but just because we don't have a lot of time and I want to go into more detail on the middle school and the high school, I'm going to skip over the rest of these advice. And if you all have any questions about it, we can just go to that during the question section because I would really would like to get to you seeing where the leadership skills and all of that came to fruition because that's what's most important, right? The leadership skills is what led to me being such a powerful advocate. And the person that I have to say to that is the wonderful, amazing Mrs. Tracy Downs Goolsby. Hey, Mrs. G, want to get to the fun stuff? Sure, Philip, let's do it. All right. Philip's middle school experiences, or as Mrs. G likes to call it, when I was the equivalent to a walking tornado. I never said that. <laughs> now you're making things up. <laughs> I hope you know I am being sarcastic. You used okay. that a lot on me. All right, <laughs> now let's talk about grade seven. In grade seven, behavior problems increase tremendously. This is because, well, going to a new location, I thought I could be the king. I thought I could be Mr. Mayor. I thought I could be like, oh, this is my building. I can do what I want because I'm God. And because my ego is the size of Europe, <laughs> I thought I could do whatever I felt like. Yes, we did a very good job transitioning you, so you were extraordinarily comfortable coming into seventh grade. I blame that on you. Well, it's a shared shared responsibility, I would say. Why? Technically, it wouldn't be a shared responsibility because you were the one that planned the transition. I was the one that did it. Yes, that's why it's shared, Philip. Fine. <laughs> Anyways. Anything you would like to add about the behavior problems? Um, I, it's interesting to me that you called them behavior problems. So that that's that's interesting to me that you refer to them that way. I think it was a tip, uh, something typical of the age. Um, and when you're comfortable, you have more confidence and you certainly were comfortable and had confidence. <laughs> we are... What's funny is, we already talked about the next one. The refusal to use technology, in, I'm going to really impacted the next one as well, because of wasn't succeeding well in school, because I wasn't willing to learn new techniques that could help me get better at school, because they were trying to get me to be totally digital, with me resisting to use technology, that really put everything they wanted to do with me on hold. So that really came to fruition, the struggles and the effect of that in freshman year of high school, where I was struggling with all of that stuff. Anything you would like to add? Uh, you're a very accurate reporter so far. I think um, typically <laughs> what we try to do and what we did was involve you in the process, which is really important. Um, uh, involve you in the decision making, involve you in everything. Um, and at that point in time, that strategy still didn't work. You were you were adamant. Um, I think when you talked about it, you were adamant that you didn't need it because you didn't want to need it. Um, so you were very determined to do anything you could to avoid using the iPad. Can I chime? I think it had to do with the whole thing of being seen as different. Yes, yes, and which was which which is which was interesting because when the kids saw you with the iPad, they all wanted one, um, and they were jealous. Um, so 
but I understand completely how you felt it made you stand out as different. Yes. What's funny is that when I brought out the iPad in high school, I was thought of as the, of as the god, as the cool guy, because I had the iPad. It was the same thing in middle school. You just didn't recognize it then. What's funny is <laughs> middle school is where my most significant weakness in leadership came to be. Bossiness! I was extremely bossy. I would tell everyone what to do because as I said earlier, I'm the, I thought of myself as king. I thought of myself as the almighty all ruler God. And because of my bossiness, I didn't listen to help, suggestions, strategies, which really put me behind where they wanted me to be. That's why I called myself the walking tornado. Because you okay. never knew when I was going to be bossy. You never knew when I was going to argue. You never knew when I was going to pull one of my tricks to get out of class. That That is all true. Um, and uh, it, we quickly recognized that you had leadership potential, um, but you needed to, you know, fine tune it because being a leader, you can't be bossy, right? So um, we started practicing um, and role playing, having conversations and role playing and modeling. Um, my most favorite memories were when I said, I'm going to I'm going to model and talk to you like you're talking to people right now. And then I would say and do what you were doing and you would just laugh hysterically. Um, because do you remember that? I remember that extremely. <laughs> I also remember there were times when you tried to do that and I was refused and I, it was eighth grade. I was in the, in your back room with Shane and we, put up a sign that says boys club, boys only. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that, that, is, that is all true. Something that put a real fork in the ground. But in a way it didn't. Right. One of those things that like help with the social goals, but on the topic of leadership, my leadership skills improved due to the fact that I was able to focus more on, all right, how can I make myself a good leader? A lot of the stuff that Mr. G said was true. It also had to do with my life experiences that we're going to go into more in eighth grade. But I do have to say a lot of the signature Philip Shankman techniques for leadership that y'all know and love was helped fine tune by the wonderful Mrs. G. Anything you would like to add? Eighth grade was a very uh, significant year of growth. Hey, guess what? What? Eighth grade time. Perfect. That was actually a better transition than the first take. All right. Okay. <laughs> the first time my voice was heard in the PPT was eighth grade. As I was getting ready to transition to high school, they found it was time for me to come in and put my bossiness voice to the test to see what could I do in the PPT room to help myself improve? What ideas can I bring? Because I was before not really involved with the process, but that we got to eighth grade, I started to get more involved and more appreciated in the process. Anything you want to add? Yes, uh, eighth grade is when we began, uh, we went over the, you were very interested in the IEP, so we spent a lot of time one-on-one -on -one going over the IEP, the document itself, what each part meant, um, your goals and objectives, and how progress was monitored, um, your accommodations. Um, and in preparation for involving you in the PBT process, uh, you shared what worked and didn't work, what we should add, what we should delete, um, and what your personal goals were for yourself. So that was a significant year of growth, mostly because you were interested and more invested at that time. Um, a certain maturity started to develop, which is typical of eighth grade. Um, and that allowed us to, uh, again, role play, um, modeling, 
um, you had ideas that you were going to go into the PPT and quote be bossy. Um, and we talked a lot about the purpose of it is functioning as a team um, and how you talk as a member of the team while still advocating for yourself. So we had to spend a lot of time practicing and role playing that. Um, and you did great, actually, you did great. What's funny is you just talked about the role playing. Is there anything else you want to say about that? Uh, we had to do the same thing with uh, self-advocacy. Um, I remember fresh uh, seventh grade, anytime oh. you had a question or you wanted to have a discussion with a teacher about an accommodation or question, you came to me between periods almost every period in a day. Um, so I we, you, doing that. Yeah. Um, so we, again, we would have to, you know, you identified what your concern was, what you wanted to say, you would say it and how you wanted to say it. And then we would have to rephrase and practice. Um, it, we did it in steps, you know, it's, I would go with you, but you would talk to the teacher with me there after we had practiced. Um, and then on our way back, uh, we could talk about how that went. Hey, that's better than going with that was good at that time because I didn't have a filter. And you I did not have a filter, right? So we went and practiced. And then over time, I didn't need to go with you anymore. It, over time, you would go by yourself. Um, uh, again, we had to role play and then you were ready to go by yourself without me. And then there were by the end of the year, you would come to me and say, I had this problem. I had this question. I went to the teacher. This is the outcome all independently, all in that year. What also happened that year is we did a very similar transition to high school. I personally think, if I remember correctly, it was the exact same strategy we used for middle school. Am I correct? Yes, you had, um, you went over, we went over for a tour. I believe we went twice um, after school, so no students were there. We talked about the floor plan, the diagram. We met some teachers that were in the building, um, talked about the, you met with your guidance counselor, you met with high school students, um, gave a presentation and you asked questions. And as um, I, and what's yeah. funny about that is that some of my best friends actually were the ones that gave the presentation. Yes, and they were great leaders um, and role models. And then you just picked right up on that and, and bonded with them. And on that topic, a relationship with two people in particular started to point me onto the path that I am on now. These people had severe disabilities. So I was able to learn from, all right, how can I be a better advocate for them? How can I make their lives better? Because that's what it's all about. Anything you would like to add. And please do not tell the story of the time we were locked in the elevator. <laughs> you and the kids, I was not there. Um, oh, did you hear about that? I did hear about, of course I heard about that. Um, you were, you, you, you were and still are very kind and helpful. So you were part of the unified sports programs where you were a, a peer mentor to some students with significant disabilities. Um, and you took that role very seriously. Um, you were very committed and in helping students be integrated into the sports and activities and uh, inclusion. Um, it just came natural to you um, because you were genuine in your, in your effort to help those two kids. What's funny is a lot of the campaigns that I'm running now and a lot of my ideas came from those experiences. Which is great. That's why we that's why we give those to you, right? You learn a lot from those experiences. What's funny is we already talked about these six things. We talked about the importance of starting advocacy early. As you said, Mrs. G, the earlier you start advocacy, the better. Because mm -hmm. that helps you get better for high school. If you start developing those leadership skills, that'll help you in high school, figuring out where you end up, what your path will be. Role-playing is key for skill development. Mrs. G said that perfectly. 
understanding of self before high school is important so you can advocate better. Understanding IEP then is critical because very soon at the age of 18, you're in charge. You got to run the show, which is something that you need to start understanding that document for early. High school transition. We started mine a year and about six months prior. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was extremely helpful. Anything you would like to add? Um, by the end, by the end of eighth grade, you attended your PPT after lots of prep um, and planning and uh, modeling and role playing again. Um, you attended your PPT, which uh, introduced yourself to your uh, in new high school case manager. No, um, it's not. No, well, who, there was a there was a representative there, yeah, but, it, but it, was, it was not my case manager. Well, you're right. It was a representative from the high school. Um, you presented your IEP, you presented your accommodations. Um, and what was really good about that was um, your mom was blown away, I think, at that time um, at your level of maturity and professionalism um, and that you were not bossy. Um, you were very articulate in terms of your needs and accommodations and what worked for you and what didn't and why, um, so that you were heard um, and you were a very active uh, member of that meeting. I couldn't have said that better. And with that, thank you for your time, Mrs. G. And I guess it's time to get ready for high school and our second guest. That's right. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. You're welcome. Proud of you. Thank you, Mrs. J. Oops. Okie dokie. Now it is time to start high school. And now that we are starting high school, it is time to bring in a new special guest. This special guest came into my life after I finished freshman year. And she became my special ed teacher from sophomore year till the day I graduated. And without further ado, it is time to introduce my mentor, the snarkiest person I have ever met, the person that believes she is a bigger Disney fanatic than me, and the sweetest, most caring person and biggest cat lady oh, I have God. ever met in my life, Miss Catherine Elizabeth Norman. Hey, Miss Norman. I have a new middle name. <laughs> it's better than your old one. No, I like my, my middle name. So let's get started, shall we? Let's flash back four years ago to around this time, I think it was, freshman year. Yes. I was getting ready to transition from one special ed teacher to another. And it was actually on a Monday, ironically enough, we're actually filming this on a Monday, that I first met the wonderful Miss Norman. And I was actually really nervous because I had no clue what to expect I thought she might be a demon. I thought she might be a witch. I thought she might be this mean individual. But really what surprised me was how caring and understanding she was and how she just wanted to see me improve from when I hit rock bottom in freshman year. Wonderful, Miss Norman, anything you would like to add? I had no idea you were nervous to meet with me. You did it? No, no clue. I'm surprised. No, had absolutely no clue. I went into a meeting with your mom and Miss Crisula, just with as open a, a mind as I could, because I had only heard bits and pieces about freshman year, you know, for the most part of that year. Um, and just figured I'd go into this meeting with the two of them to find out what it is that your mom was hoping would happen for you. And then you, did you come into that meeting or did you come to my room? 
I came to your room. Shumway afterwards, to, right? Yeah, and Shumway had to end the meeting. Oh, that's right. I forgot you wouldn't the the because you know her outside of school, so you guys kept talking and talking. We all got talking, and then finally, like, um, I think the day's over. <laughs> no, it's like, or you had to go to class. I had to go to science. Yeah. Yep. I forgot about that. That's funny. Sorry, Shumway, for giving you a shout out in the middle of a presentation. <laughs> My fondest apologies. What <laughs> I just found so interesting was from that minute, we actually, it was like, oh, this is going to be good because we actually connected from that first minute. Yeah. Well, I think even her being there, maybe that helped you as well. It was because you knew her. It was like an icebreaker without yeah. knowing it was an icebreaker. Right. She came into it. She didn't she like walk in on us trying to figure things out? Yeah. Yeah. What I what's actually interesting is we're now gonna tie in this experience that I went through with the state when they started the Youth Advisory Council. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't Miss Norman who nominated me. <laughs> Surprise! Any snarky remark? No snarky mark remark on that one. Like I, I, I was saying to you earlier about this, I, it, that was like halfway through sophomore year, so I only knew you for about four or five months I don't think I, and I, I, with anybody in your class, I, well, no, I only knew you for like four or five months. So I didn't, it was not something on that was quick to my brain. And we're going to talk, get to in a little more detail about the leadership stuff and how she actually impacted this current adventure that I'm on. Because it was actually Miss Norman. There was a big supporter in me going after this opportunity. Right, Miss Norman? Yes. And also in grade 10, we started the big tech struggles. Yes. Where I was the first ever fully tech student. And there was a huge issue of, all right, where do I learn this? How do we get this app? How do we learn this? What application do we need in order to be successful? That was right. a big struggle and something that I have talked about numerous times and commend you for is how you showed how resilient you were and how you went into that sandbox of tech apps with me <laughs> and tried to learn them with me. There were times when we were frustrated, yep. wanted to pull over punch pull of a pencil like she did to Flynn Ryder with the frying pan and tangle. You remember math was the, math was the hardest too. That's what I remember. Math was not hard until junior year. So I had such an issue trying to come up with ways to help you with the math. I still don't think that there are enough good programs out there to help with math. Not in the right way. Like Equatio doesn't isn't set up to work smoothly within a math class. And I don't, I, some of the other ones just bombed. Exactly. And what's going to be so interesting is that in the fall, I'm taking a math class. Oh. And I'm actually suggesting that we hold off on the math class because of the tech and needing to like, Get a math app under my belt before we go into the math class. We'll see what kind of apps they have, but let's just focus on. Oh no, that was part of the thing. It was the connector. Oh. Okay. Anyways, sorry, I do have a cat tail flashing in my face. Yeah, cats, 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 and cats. I told y'all she's a huge cat lady. I warned all of you. We were getting involved with. The real this life is a Norwegian forest cat. <laughs> He's 22 pounds. <laughs> Go on. It is a big love. Great. Anyway. All right. In grade 11, we, I started to really take control of my education. 
that's yes. when I started to get more involved with the meetings. Everything went through me. I was like the big executor. I helped a lot of times behind the scenes. Yes. Anything you would like to add? Yes. Um, I think you you need to make clear that you did not attend your sophomore one. Oh yeah, I, I, I think there was I think there was a comfort level there that you did not have. Um, we talked to you about how the the PPT would run and what would be discussed, and you did not attend that one. By junior year, you were you were more pleased with your progress academically. Your grades had improved tremendously. I do not that they were say. not that they were bad but you were definitely on the path to where you wanted to be. Um, and Can I pause you for we, a minute? Yeah. I do want to say the sophomore year PPT occurred when I had a test. You did? Oh, yeah. It was bio. Bio test. Okay. I don't think you wanted to be there either, though. I wanted to be there if I didn't have the test. It was the second oh, okay. year. I remember that. Because then, well, junior year, I, um, you wanted, I remember you wanting to take the PPT in a particular direction that would not help. So then, you know, we'll get to senior year, but by senior year, you understood the PPT process a lot better. What's just funny is, well, you didn't attend the whole PPT either. I think we were trying to get you back into class junior year. Because it was, we were actually doing a huge English thing. Okay. It was actually, we were doing, you know, the top, you know, the Huck Finn stuff? Yep. We were doing that. And I also feel like my best moments advocating for myself really didn't happen until senior year. Yes. Because senior year, which was miraculous, I was able to run an entire meeting on my own with limited support. You started the year off with the teacher meeting that I set up. Your mom did not come in for it where she had run the, the start of the year meetings the previous two years. Um, just to make sure that the teachers understood what we were looking for. You and I met up in, well, it was in class, but we used our class time to help you set up um, what information you wanted the teachers to start off the year with. But you need to... Your mom attended, but I she tried to keep quiet. No, she didn't. It was really... She didn't attend at all? If you remember correctly. No, I don't. That's the problem. <laughs> We went, it was you, me, the third member of our of the trio. Yes, yep. And our honorary tech assistant who was there part of the year. Or was that junior year she was there part of the year? That was junior year she was part. And then we went over a list that I created beforehand. I came yes. into senior year. More organized than I ever have been. You, by, by the end of junior year, you knew what programs worked for you. You knew how to set up your Google sites, your Google um, uh, folders um, for each class and which way it worked. What was still not working for you was having to take pictures of things. So we walked into the senior year making sure that having to take pictures of a ton of different assignments or reading articles did not take place because that was just getting way too cumbersome for you junior year. And I, I think your senior year teachers met up with that with less and less resistance over the three years that I worked with you. And I think part of that also went because one, you were a senior and you owned it more. And two, because I had more open dialogue with them, and I feel like... Outside of class, yes. That, we, as well as for math in particular, which never happened before. No. The two... No, that was... Bridge. Junior year's math class was a nightmare because that's when we tried to bring in Equatio. 
don't get and then, started. And then you ended up behind in the class because you were trying so hard to work the program into the material that it was just was not working and at all. Then we had to change that in the IEP as well as. I don't think I no because that was more of an experiment. Did we change the IEP for that? Yeah. Or were we, we experimenting to see if we needed to put it in the IEP? It was a math app thing in the IEP. It was the goal and objective. We changed it. I remember that exquisitely. I also want to let you know I reviewed my old IEPs. Ah, good for you. Meeting. Okay. You may not know this. I constantly review my old IEPs as a reminder for myself on how much personal growth I've made. Okay, I like that. And I personally feel that what helped in senior year was the fact that I feel like it wasn't like in past years we had some teachers wanting to go one direction with the tech and everything else with me. And this time we had one collective unit because what I really liked was we were all able to bounce ideas off of each other. We were able to try and work and change my weaknesses into strengths, which never happened before. Where okay. Everyone was on the same page, which really helped was the fact that my junior year math teacher, who has a, I have a very good relationship with, bridged the math stuff from junior year to senior year. Did you know that? Was it the same teacher? Two different teachers. I went from just say initials KS to B. That's what I thought. To who? BL. Oh, that's right. I forgot about. Okay. Yep. Yep. She was so on board with everything because she came up with a couple of ways to help you out. And like, she made my life easy. Well, she does, she also teaches at the college level, which really helped with right, right. So she she could see how what she could do to help you out with that as well. I do have to say that she was a huge helper in getting me where I needed to be in terms of the meeting, in terms of me understanding. All right, how can I be a good leader? getting ready for college. And I also feel that a huge leadership thing that happened that year. Oh, Norman, you know I am going to mention this. No crud. Was in the fall, I was put in charge of my own show. Oh, that's right. You yes. have to admit that was a huge yes. thing. Yes, it was a very huge thing. I'm not sure how many times you made me sit down and help you come up with the schedule. Yeah. That was, that was, that was awful. <laughs> it might have been awful. It when you had, I hate it when you had tech week because of any of the years, because all we did was sit down and make you a schedule for each week. And then you'd come in the next day. I want to change it. <laughs> no, we're not changing it. Why do you need to change it? I want to eat a half hour earlier Then eat half an hour earlier. <laughs> Because I also did track, if y'all didn't know. We've... I know, but... It, I'm yeah, saying that for the was... audience, not for you. You literally lived my life with me. You were, like, along for the ride in high school. Yeah, you're like, oh, do you want us to come and have dinner? No, uh-uh. No. Getting back on no. track, we felt that the high school, during that leadership stuff, it helped me boost my self-confidence, boost my understanding of self tremendously. You have to admit that. Yeah, I'm also going to admit I'm the one that asked you, what do you, is it that you want the teachers to know about you? That was not the leadership program. Yeah. Yeah. I give you credit for that. I feel like I give a huge credit for how I acted in the meetings and my understanding of myself to this wonderful human being here and her sidekick. My sidekick. Who was unable to join us today due to budget constraints on my part. Sidekick? Do I have a sidekick? You did when it came to dealing with me. Not senior year. Yes, senior year. I know, but I didn't meet with her and you senior year. You met with her because you brought her into everything. 
So I lost my sidekick. You just had a second go to that. You, you figured, you started to figure out who you were and what you wanted. And that was one of the biggest things that helped you by senior year was you, you wanted to understand yourself and how you learned better. I don't get that with a lot of my students. So that was something that was very unique for you that helped you a lot and prove that you needed to be a part of the leadership program and that you deserve to be a part of the leadership program. Um, I do want to chime in on one thing about the whole going to another go-to. What made it interesting was around November, you went out of the picture for about three months. Yes. And that really made me learn, have like the first slap in the face, as I call <laughs> it. What do you do? Let's think of this as like a bell knife. What do you do when they pull the base right underneath, out right underneath you? And yep. how, if you have to have meetings, how do you run them? During that time that she was away, we ran into a lot of significant difficulties in one class in particular. Yes. Because of the arguing and behavioral stuff that we talked about in middle school, which really didn't stop till about sophomore year, when she took the reins because she's very strict and scares me sometimes. I'm being dead serious. You scan me sometimes in sophomore year. I did? Yes. I thought the other one did. With the help of the other one. You guys got that out of me, but that yeah. really created a... Yeah, but okay, going back to senior year when I was out, who did you end up going to? You, I thought you were more on your own. That was one of my hopes with Miss um, Crisula was that you were going to kind of, and your mom, that you were going to kind of take that time to, to see how you would do without my support. I, and I was only out for three weeks, by the way. It felt longer. It well because I had bronchitis before I had my surgery. Yeah. Great combo. Terrible. It was more of a combination of like, for one class in particular, I went to. Okay. And I do have to say, I split the time with them now. If there was a situation that I didn't know what to do, I went to them. Sometimes I okay. just went to these two because, hey, it's senior year. You got to soak up everything you possibly can before you go off to La Vista. Yep. And yep. just so we can get to the more formal conversation part, this wonderful person right here was actually one of the people that told me to go after this opportunity because I might start choking up here and crying because she knew that this opportunity to have this voice, to be the voice at the table, could be a life-changing experience for me. And who knows, and who knew almost a year later that she would be absolutely right. <laughs> It does happen occasionally. Yeah, it does. Plus, I can. I remember when I came in to your Zoom room, no, your Google Meet room, like we're meeting right now, and said, "Oh, oh, from COVID." Yeah, I have this offer. What should I do? And, and, yeah. and you like made me have a light bulb moment. You yeah. made me realize. Well, and we talked also about how your school, your your new school, would react to it, and how you could fit it into your schedule. We came up with a couple of different alter al alternative schedules for you as far as how you would work it around class time. Um, unfortunately, COVID hit even harder, so you didn't attend school. And I think that may have actually, I personally, I think that kind of helped you understand and, and how to make the schedules on your own at this point. What's funny is you may not know this, I still make the schedules like we did in high school. That's what I mean. But I, you, you would always bring them to me 
And I think what helped with this program is, I mean, yeah, I knew you were going to be able to do college and four or five or six courses of college and figure it out. But adding in this program is like you trying to do, is like you trying to do um, tech week when you have uh, racing, you know, a, a big race coming up as well. So I think that that helped you prepare for, for this year as well. And you understand how to add this kind of a project into a regular school year now. And what's so interesting? And you did it. You did it on your own. Patting my back now. Good for me. Yay me. Yay me. <laughs> now. You should be proud of it. Let us get to the fun part. What uh -oh. do you feel went well with me in meetings and PPTs and my self-advocacy of myself? <sighs> Are you saying what went well for you based on the three years that I worked with you? I think by by senior year, you knew how to be focused. You knew how to to approach a teacher on the specific thing that you needed. You need knew how to walk into a, the PPT with your with your specific information on your progress, where you wanted to go, what you were going to do. Whereas by in sophomore year, okay, I, I got to throw this one out there and you had to know it was coming. How many times did you leave my room in like a two and a half minute span? 100. <laughs> Miss Norman, Miss Norman, I gotta go see my math teacher. Go right ahead, go see your math. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm also gonna stop and get a drink. Of, I don't care if you get a drink of water. Okay, okay, I'm going now. Okay, go, go see your math teacher. Oh, wait a minute, did I tell you what I'm gonna be doing after school today? No, you can tell me after you go see your math teacher. Okay, why am I going to go see my math teacher? That's how you approach the meetings as well. By senior year, you didn't do that walking in and out of my classroom in three minutes. You, I need to go see my math teacher, and you left the room. There was and you went to see your math teacher. See. That's how you handled the meetings as well. You, we were able to give you, we were able to bring your voice into the PPT because you were able to keep yourself focused. We could all see the growth that you had made personally. You definitely understood your... Um, your learning style, your learning traits, whatever phrase you want to use. You and I had talked previously. Uh, you, you and I talked before each of the meetings because I think we had two that you attended senior year and you knew what to walk in and where you wanted your voice to be heard. That, again, high school students typically mature in that way, especially by senior year. But you you owned it. You wanted to bring that piece of it. You would come to me and say, how do I get better at this? And that for me, like I said before, a lot of freshmen um, through sophomores and some juniors are still not at that point. They're like, yeah, 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 whatever, Ms. Nolman. Ha, ha, ha. I'll just sit there and you guys will tell me what I'm going to do. But you knew that if you just sit there and we tell you what to do, you're not going to own it. So you wanted to make sure that you were heard the right way. And how do you... Ms. Nolman, how do I how do I get heard the correct way? I when I go see this teacher, how do I share my frustrations or my my misunderstandings or whatever was going on? I remember you telling me something once of it's your destiny. You can yes. see it as throw it away like a football or take full advantage of it. And it's yes. fully up to you on what yep. you decide to do. Right. And I think that went along with what you were trying to achieve grade wise as well. I don't remember your freshman grades, but I remember sophomore grades were definitely not where you wanted them to be. You knew what kind of a student you could be. And again, by junior year, the tech stuff was getting further and further behind us as far as how you could use it. And by senior year, you just you aced it because I had good people showing me the way. What do you well, and then you also understood because I have some students who are juniors or seniors over all these years, you tell them, you know, if college is, if college is where you're going and colleges see that you 
didn't, you know, your grades freshman year may not have been that great, but you figured it out and you improved to be the the student you wanted to be and, and could be by senior year. Colleges see that. Colleges understand that. They don't want to see somebody who's like a CD student and they maintain that. And again, you understood that and you went, oh, you didn't start thinking, well, okay, my college options are ruined because I didn't have as great a freshman year as I would have liked. You understood they're going to see, wow, this this kid really figured it out. I so again, you. you by senior by junior mid junior year to senior year, you really started listening in. I feel, and then of course COVID hit, and we had a whole new set of issues to figure out. That is for another spiel. Yep. <laughs> that would be not under what I know now. That would be uh. under. What happened? Well, again, no, I think that you could focus. There's another piece of it. One thing that I have seen is the students, I, I have some students, you either get it or you don't. You get how to do virtual or you don't get how to virtual do virtual. I don't really have any kids that are kind of iffy. They either are achieving the same type of grades that they always have, which are pretty good, or they are bombing. And you figured it out and you knew I need another meeting. Can we get another meeting? You knew how to speak up through um, COVID to get, okay, I need to meet with um, my history teacher because I've got to figure out how to do this. I need to meet with Nolman so that I can figure out how to get through this test. I need another meet. At what time can we meet? So, and you left yourself flexible in order to do that. And that, again, was something that I think is a, um, a wonderful thing that, that, again, not all of the kids that are, even now I have kids who are still virtual who have not figured it out. I do want to say though, I feel like the fact that I would tech driven so long. It was, you just moved right into it. It was like- You were the one, are you kidding? I was freaking out about having to do a Google meet and you were the one that taught it to me. And as I said to you, I finally made it to heaven. <laughs> that was my heaven. My education. I'm in my, I'm in my, my my what i've been trying to become all along that was that was your moment that was definitely your moment i feel like the one thing that went wrong was trying to get me on board with this whole focus focus on what in the meetings focusing you you still jump around you you definitely still but you know that about yourself so if i call you on it even now when when um i'll hear you working with my son you kind of laugh and and pull yourself back whereas before you're like no no i didn't do that because now i am as you say philip you need to do adulting Yes. Adulting. Yes. Adulting sucks. <laughs> I just did my best Miss my... impression. <laughs> and what do I sound like that? Yeah, you do. You sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Wah, 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 wah. Yes. What's so interesting to me about all of this is that we were able to get through having a lot of the times the cards were stacked against the dynamic duo. We, How much did you meet with her, though, during COVID? Did you? Yeah. One, you did? Okay. We went to twice a week when that incident happened. Oh, it was still in your IEP? Yeah. We went to. Oh, okay. I kept thinking that she had cut back by the end of just senior year. Because she wants, no, she wants to spend as much time with me as possible. Okay, well then, and think about what we did with the tech piece then too. That's when we were finally able to get some other people on board to really focus on what the colleges were going to be requiring of you. And that set me up for some good, some bad. If your school is registered to watch the presentation title first year reflection yep. school and your students will hear more about that. You will hear okay. more about how that whole process happened because this is all about what made me 
successful. Yep. And with that, because we went over, we did about 30 minutes. It feels like. I'll take your word for it. Thank you so much, Miss Norman. As always, it was a pleasure. I am so happy that I was able to get you involved with my first keynote. And be able to All right. Talk. All right. We shall talk soon. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs>